Okay, let us go ahead and get ourselves started again. What I'd like to do with the rest of our time today is really give you some guidance about really how you could approach a project like this, because doing things as you're modeling things in a multi-story building is a little bit more complex, not hugely more complex, but it's a little more complex than doing things at a single level. But if you sort of set things up in the right way, you can keep yourself out of trouble and actually give yourself some good oh, guidelines for uh, making it all work. The hardest part really about doing multi-story modeling tends to be the notion of just keeping things in alignment you know, from one level to another, just because you have this other dimension where it's not always clear what's happening in plan views anymore. Okay, So the whole notion of being able to kind of look through a plan and see other levels to make sure you're aligning things vertically, okay, or even provide yourself with a, a framework of just construction lines or what we'll talk about are grids and levels to make sure things staying are staying in line with each other is really, really helpful just for organizing your work. So let's start with that, just this whole notion of start setting up a dimensional framework and look at levels and grids and see how we can use those before we actually start modeling real elements in the space. So if I pop on over to the example and I go to level one, phase two, for example, let's just take a look at what levels already exist in the building. So if I go to the front elevation or any of the elevations in phase one or phase two, looks like the levels aren't even being shown there. Hang on, let me see if I can turn them on over here. And there they are over there. Turns out the levels are actually sort of constant across the different uh, phases. So if I have, in fact, they're constant across all the different sort of buildings in the same project file. So level one, level two, level three, and the roof level of the first building are really dictated right now and they are available in all the different buildings that we're going to be designing. If you want to go through and create yourself some new levels because you don't want to work with 10 foot floor heights, you can go through and put a new level in here. It'll appear in all the different models. You can control its visibility. But that's one thing about modeling as part of the same project file as opposed to doing separate project files and linking them together. Everything in the same project file shares all the same levels. So if you like level two, three, and roof, just kind of keep that the way it is. I'd probably recommend doing that. But if you need to create a new level for yourself, think about either adding a new level, and we can do that either offsetting or uh, dragging something through here. Maybe I'll create a new level called level 2.5 or something like that. It's very, very helpful to give yourself oh, a numbering scheme that'll make it easy to follow. So. If it's between two and three, 2.5 is a pretty good choice. It doesn't, it's really confusing if level six shows up between two and three because people just aren't sure what's going on. So <laughs> something like that is pretty good in terms of just adding whatever levels. Yes? So beyond like a level and one elevation, it's kind of just in the whole project. Exactly. Now, if you don't want it to show up in all your different projects, you can take it in the other building and you can either hide it in view or we could even give it a parameter that'll let it make it uh, kind of disappear in some specific views. But in general, for now, I'd let, it, I'd let your levels kind of show up in all the different uh, like elevations. Okay, another way of doing this though, is you don't necessarily have to do it strictly as levels. You can also set up something called a reference plane. And a reference plane is, it's like a level, it just doesn't have a floor plan cut on it, but it's really just a piece of geometry, a plane that's available for you to hang geometry or kind of attach geometry to. So if you want to go through and, for example, create a reference plane instead, won't be as strong as a level, but it sort of has the same function, I can say, let me kind of find it in here. Let me, it's right over here on my screen. It's kind of hidden because it's sort of hanging off this tail end. Let's draw a reference plane. And I can draw a nice reference plane across the top here. Now, reference planes, if you go through and create them, it's very helpful to name them. Because if you name your reference planes, then you can grab them later. If they don't have a name, it's really hard to grab them Okay, in different sorts of dialogues that allow you to choose them. So to name a reference plane, what I can do is I've chosen it there. Let me select it. And I can give it instance properties, open that up. And I'll say, oh, this is the top of something above the roof. Okay. And 
again, that's not going to print. That's not going to show up anywhere. That's just going to be a piece of geometry, a little reference point that I can use to go through and hang things off of. So if I go through and do something like, for example, I wonder if I can do it here. Pull that up. This is going to look ugly. I could align the top of that to the reference plane and lock it. And the nice thing now is, because it's aligned to the reference plane, if I move the reference plane, it'll move the top of that too. So reference planes, it's just, you know, it's a piece of geometry. It's a, a reference point just for hanging things off of. Okay, but so go ahead and use those. It's actually very handy to go through and, let me pull this back a little. Create yourself some different reference planes to work with. Whenever you have, whenever you find yourself aligning, oh, four or five different things together, think about a reference plane and whether that'd be useful to have sort of a virtual line that might make that a little bit easier on you. Now, in the horizontal dimensions, we it's nice to go through and set up some sort of a system too. Let me pop open one of the floor plan views. Rather than just sort of referring to the building and saying it's the southwestern corner or the southeastern corner or the kind of middle corner on the courtyard side, which starts to get to be a little bit imprecise. It's very nice to go through as you start working with bigger buildings and set up a grid system. And a grid system, again, is just part of a dimensional framework. It's just a system that's going to help you keep things organized. So for example, I can draw a grid. A grid's sort of like a reference line. I can draw another grid over here. Kay. As I draw different grid lines, Notice that they're going to number themselves, one and two, and that's a good starting point. So I start putting different grids in there. I can draw grids in the other dimension. That's the most common way of using this. Now, for this other dimension, a very common thing is if one and two is the left-right direction, numeric is that way, I'll give these an alphabetic name. So then at this point, that becomes point A2. That becomes point A1. So when we're hanging columns, we can actually give them a specific name, and that'll actually help us keep oriented about what's going on. I could take these, and I can sort of put some more grid lines in there. I can draw them like I have been doing, or offset them. If I want to put some more in there, I can offset them and maybe create a nice grid system. I know 10 feet's a little bit close. The grid lines are really, they're just for giving you a point of reference for describing the geometry. So I can say with some certainty, the column right here is at A1, the column right here is at C1, the column right there is at or E2. It's just, it's really, it's a, it's a numbering scheme. Okay, and it's also useful from the standpoint of, let me zoom on out, if, for example, I go through and put a wall in, and I draw it on the reference lines, let me zoom on in there even closer. Oh, I will scale that up to, well, what kind of wall is that? That looks like that, but I'm not seeing much in terms of, I don't see much detail. What I want to show you is that if I just, well, let me try something different. Well, no, I'll even do it here. That's fine. If I align basically this grid line with, say, the center line of the wall and lock them together, the nice thing now is if I later decide to go through and move that grid line, it'll move the wall with it. So again, grid lines are really kind of a high level framework. It's actually quite good to lock your columns and your walls <coughs> to grid lines because then later on, if you decide that the building needs to be 28 feet as opposed to 30 feet, you can just move the grid line and all the walls will sort of move with it. And the grid line actually is here for level one. It's also here for level two and level three. So even up here at level three, those grid lines are still there. They're very useful for helping you align things between the different floors. So grids are sort of a good thing to have around. And 
You may not have them right at the beginning <coughs> of your project, and you might need to sort of play around with the form a little bit and figure out where the grid lines will be. But as we start you know, locking in and saying, I got the approximate shape, are there any sort of key axes that really help define the geometry? It's good to put grid lines down and hang off of those. Okay, so this is all just really sort of really creating a framework. It's not, we're not really modeling anything yet. We're just giving ourselves just a framework for describing where things are and for hanging geometry to make sure they align properly. Okay, so if you're good there, let's move on to the next thing, which is really how you get started with your modeling. Now, there are really kind of two big approaches I might advocate for doing this. Okay, we could just start placing walls and doors and windows and copying them up between the different levels and that'll work. We could start doing detailed modeling. Or you might want to start with the whole notion of a conceptual mass and use that as a way of generating your faces. It really just depends on how you want to get started. If you know that, for example, oh, you need a building that's about 60,000 square feet or something like that, it's kind of nice to take a mass shape push and pull it and create mass floors to figure out do you actually have 60,000 square feet at a high level before you start diving into the detail of the design. Okay, But it doesn't have to be that way, but let me just illustrate that as one of the possibilities so you know about it, but if you don't, that doesn't feel comfortable, you can go ahead and uh, just start modeling spaces and in your own mind kind of keep track of really how you're doing relative to your square foot goals. So if, for example, over here, I had some new building and I know that I wanted it to turn out to be, oh, let's say 50,000 square feet. That's just sort of a rough target for what I have in mind, okay, based on my program. I can go through and create a mass to try and uh, simulate that. And I can create that mass either in place in this project, or I can create it in the conceptual modeling environment, which will let me reuse it on several different projects. But I'll just do it in place. That's <coughs> sort of a quickie way of doing it. So let's show you what that looks like. Okay, it's going to show the mass mode, just so we can sort of see what that's like. This is going to be my building two mass. And I can just start drawing out a form. Oh, I know that I kind of wanted to go here to here and maybe be over there. But oh, what is it? I'm kind of thinking of more of an H-shaped building or a U-shaped building, something like that. So. I'm just really quickly creating some form, okay? And out of this basic profile, I'm gonna say make a form. Let's take a look at it in 3D. There it is. And I just got a basic mass over there, and I can go ahead and make that as tall as I want to maybe about 40 feet tall, maybe even 50 feet tall. Okay, now at a high level, I'd like to know just how much space did I really just encompass by doing that and get some feedback on that. So how you can do that is if you finish the mass, okay, there's the mass hanging out. You can choose it. And I can do this thing called mass floors. We did that a couple sessions ago. which will just sort of divide it up into different segments. How many more loop is it in there? I'm going to put it in level 2.5 in there. Now think about why that's not showing up in just a second. <coughs> I think loops should be there. But with those mass floors in place, let's go ahead and show you how you could actually quantify that. It's uh, called a schedule of the mass floors. And I can schedule amongst the various things that I can schedule as mass floors. Then I can say, oh, give me a different level. And the key thing is the floor area. Maybe total the floor areas. Again, don't worry, this is going by real quick. It'll show up on the video, so you can kind of watch it there. But I also have a lot of resources that'll kind of show you that. Okay, so that's level one. Oh, you know what it is? I've got level three on roof. I bet my mass actually isn't going deep enough because it's 
<laughs> I'm wondering why I only have level three and roof, two floor levels. And I think the issue is, let me go on back here. I'm fooling myself. <laughs> it's always something. <coughs> so what I want to do is push the bottom down too. Let me edit the mass. Actually, even in the mass, with it kind of selected like that, I can pull it down. There it goes. Okay, now I have a lot more mass floors. So I can then go back to the schedule again. The schedule, just so you're wondering, if you're wondering where it shows up, it is the mass floor schedule. Okay, so so far I got about 30,000 square feet in there. If my goal was to come up somewhere closer to 50,000 square feet, I might want to uh, kind of take a look at those things together and see if I can change that shape. Let me tile the windows. Oh, that's a little bit much, isn't that? Okay. Hmm. Don't want that. Uh, switch the windows. Let me get the 3D view back. Which one was which? What up? Yeah. Right there? Yeah. <laughs> uh, okay, let's do this. I'll make it big. Watch this one. Close all hidden windows. See ya. Okay, and now we can open the... Uh, <laughs> Mass floor schedule, and uh, there you go. And I'll tile those too. <coughs> well, closer. I still have some things I'll open from the other project. Let me close those out too. Okay, here's the deal. I got the mass floor schedule. I got my mass down here. So what I can do is actually start to push and pull. And as I'm pushing and pulling, can you see the numbers changing up there? About 40 now. Ooh, pretty close. <laughs> okay. So the idea is you can use masses and mass floors. This is a real quick way of getting some feedback to see are you even in the right ballpark. Okay. And that's just a starting point. That's all I want to kind of show you about that. We can start and we'll talk about some more uh, building different sort of twisted and distorted and interesting forms. But uh, even if you just sort of do a very <coughs> basic form, mass floors is just a real, it's the quickest way to really kind of figure out just how much space you have. Now, if this is looking a little bit boring to you and you want to actually think about having something that's a little more interesting as a shape, let me say edit that in place. And I'll just do something really basic because I don't want to get it too complicated. I'll just sort of slope that side of the building out like that instead and finish that. Okay, again, the mass floors will show that's about 53,000 right now. But that's enough to go ahead and get started. You know, just something like that. So I want you to think about mass floors really is just a way to get yourself going. Okay. Optionally, we can create the surfaces from the mass faces. Okay. We don't have to. You could just go ahead and take that mass and start placing individual walls. But it's kind of a nice shortcut if you have those mass faces in about the right place to say, hey, I want this face to be a curtain wall or I want this face to be a wall surface and just use it as a way to generate that form as opposed to having to place it all. So we'll show you how to do that. Now, as I'm doing this, I want to sort of bring on this very important point I think about in terms of trading off. It's kind of shape complexity versus modeling time. As I start tweaking those different mass forms, I can start creating some pretty incredibly complicated shapes and really do something very architecturally groovy. But okay, every time I twist and contort and make something a compound curve, I'm really increasing the amount of time it's going to take us to model this thing. Because for all those groovy, twisted, contorted forms, like, oh, things like just walls joining nicely at corners don't always necessarily work the same way. So we have to start doing some custom things to get things to hang together for these sloping surfaces and these funny curving surfaces. So just be cautious about using that. Although we can, and I know you will in a future design, do some incredibly interesting organic shapes. Don't necessarily set yourself up with an incredibly organic shape for this assignment because you only have so much time to kind of get it out. Because if you do, you're just, you're, you know, every time you pull that thing out and kind of twist the shape, you're adding another six hours to the assignment. It's like it's one of those. <laughs> so, you know, think of that. You know, use it judiciously. Okay, so in terms of uh, those different shapes, let's take a look at that. 
Uh, let me zoom up on this one. If this was the shape that I liked, and I wanted to go through and use this shape as the beginning of my new building, not to worry. What I will do is choose that, and I'll go to massing and site. All these things about converting these into surfaces happen right under here. Roofs, curtain walls, floors, and uh, curtains. Uh, the fourth one, roof, curtain walls, walls, and floors. Okay. So let's do that. some of the easy ones. I'll choose the roof. I can choose some sort of surface for the roof that I want in here. Maybe a nice insulated metal deck. Say that's going to be a roof surface. For the wall surfaces, if I want to sort of mirror the same sort of, uh, I'm going to pop back out of here. If for the wall surfaces, I'd like to mirror the uh, walls that are on the existing building, I could choose these stone veneer panels. Pick by face. I get the whole notion, is it going to be on the exterior or the interior based on that face? Let me go ahead and make that a stone wall, and I'll make that a stone wall. Okay, maybe even, uh, I'll make that a curtain wall right there. Okay, I'll make that a nice stone wall. When it comes time to go through and make the curtain walls, I can go back to there, say model by face. And I can say, you know, I'd like you, your big sloping surface, to be a curtain system. And kind of uh, roll it around. Now, these are true building elements. So let me go ahead and pop back out of here. And let me just say, don't hide or turn off showing the mask. I'll hide the mask. Okay. Those are real building elements. Those are just the same as though I went through and in the floor plan view drew out the wall and extended it up to that top of the level. It's really, it has all the same features. So, for example, if I went through right now and added windows to it, of course I should do this at floor plan levels so they actually show up in a reasonable level. Okay, that'll work just the same. It's really, it's just the same. So think of this really as just way being a way of quickly generating form that may help you, okay, if you've already done the massing. Now, the one time when you will need to do it this way is if you have, for example, a sloping surface, because those can't be generated using the standard tools. The only good way to generate those is off the mass, okay? But again, this is sort of just an optional thing in terms of whether you want to go down that path. Now, I kind of like going that path because I think it, it saves me a lot of time to do it that way. But you don't have to. Okay. <coughs> Actually, what'll happen is these are going to attach just fine back over here in the corner. Where it'll get you in trouble is if we have interior walls, and I put interior walls, they'll attach to this wall just fine. Let me show you. <coughs> no, yeah, very good question. Let me go up to level three. So here we are, and you can sort of see. There is that wall stone wall, and there's the curtain wall over there. Okay, so watch this. If I go through and start drawing interior walls, so I'll just choose sort of an interior wall, and I go pulling down up against that wall, A-okay. No hassles. That worked just fine. Okay, same thing over. Okay, do another one. Because it's sort of a vertical wall, it'll be just fine, and I can put my uh, walls and doors and windows, whatever I want to do in there. That'll be just fine. Okay. The one that'll get you in trouble is this guy over here because it's the sloping curtain wall. So when you go through and you put a wall in here, since it's a sloping wall, it doesn't quite know how to join with that thing. In fact, if I sort of zoom on in, see if I can find it right there. See, right now, actually, you can even sort of see what's going on there. It's kind of half in and half out. <laughs> okay, so we have to do a little kind of custom work in there. And to do that, what we're going to do is we're going to go through and cut a section where we can really see the slope, and we're going to adjust the wall profile to kind of match that curve. But that's an example of, oh, that sounds like a lot of work. So every time we have a sloping wall, we're sort of picking up that work. Okay. Because in the current state of the tools, they're just not really good at doing that stuff for you automatically. So not to discourage you, <coughs> but just use, use those sort of features very judiciously. And then if you do do that, okay, 
go ahead and I'm even going to allow, in terms of where this is going with the model, for your preliminary design, if every office wall up against a sloping wall doesn't quite join perfectly with a sloping glass wall, that's okay. Because it's really, you know, it's going to be a lot of work that you'd spend the next three months doing, kind of getting all those precisely there. So, yeah, don't let the fact that it's hard to model dissuade you from doing something interesting. But accept the fact that at a first level, you may have some little inconsistencies or little kind of loose ends hanging around that would be on your hit list to s resolve later. Okay, so coming back over here, we're creating surfaces from the mass floors. Optionally, we can go do that. We can kind of think about this shape trade-off. That's kind of okay, and that's a perfectly valid way of working. Okay, but let me also show you sort of the more conventional way of doing it, because you're really going to need to sort of merge sort of, you know, conceptual masses with conventional, and you want to sort of be able to kind of handle both those things. So let's come back over here. Actually, one thing I didn't do, let me kind of show that mass again. So I didn't go through and put any floors in, so let me go ahead and put that in there too. That'll help us. And I'm going to choose, let me kind of zoom on down in here somewhere. I'm going to choose to put a floor down at the bottom. Actually, I can choose. The bottom one wants to be a concrete slab for my building anyway. At the upper levels, let me create that floor. I think it already did it. Okay, at the upper levels, let's go ahead and say, oh, what do we have here? Like lightweight concrete on a metal deck is a very common system. So I'll choose. See if I can get it. I'm trying. I'm selecting through the curtain wall, which is a little hard to do. There it is. Yeah, I didn't see that. I think I missed. Actually, call me an idiot, right? Let's take the curtain wall. Actually, <laughs> please do. <laughs> and uh, hide that into the elements. Okay. This will be a little bit easier. I'm control clicking to get them both, and I'll create the floor that way. <coughs> okay, that's a little bit better looking. <coughs> What's that? Okay, so we can go through and add those different things in. 